Simon Clark, Chief Secretary mm. to the Treasury, uh, is with us. Hello to you, Mr. Clark. Your reaction to what you're seeing? Well, these are obviously extremely distressing images, and I think everyone's hearts will go out to the families affected by, uh, by this awful event. What it goes to show clearly is that we've got a, a lot of work to do to help uh, mitigate the sort of extreme climate events that we're now witnessing. And, uh, and, and this is a reminder today, I think, of, of the importance of, of, of tackling climate change, because this is a, a remarkable, unprecedented event. Uh, and something which, obviously, as people have been saying, we are not used to seeing in this country. What, we, what we've seen over recent days is not normal, and uh, it, is a, it is a warning sign. You said that delivering net zero is hugely important, and, and yet you're backing Liz Truss, who wants to suspend the green levy, which would help in trying to get to net zero. So, so how do you square that circle? That's a one-year mitigation designed to save families about £150 off their energy bills at a time when, obviously, the cost of living is so uh, is, is such an important issue. But, look, Liz is completely clear. She stands by our commitment to delivering net zero by uh, 2050, uh, and that is obviously something which this government is working uh, at pace to deliver. We have a £30 billion net zero strategy about changing our... Uh, energy system in particular, but also, of course, the shift from uh, petrol and diesel cars to electric cars. All of these things are, are, are crucial if we're to make sure that we, uh, we indeed uh, do our bit as a country to make, to make uh, yeah. good on our just commitments under the Paris, the Paris Climate I mean, Accord. Yeah, just, sure, just looking at those pictures, it doesn't matter whether they're, they're electric or, or diesel or petrol, they're all uh, burnt to a cinder. What are you going to do to help these people? Well, obviously, people will have uh, insurance, but the government will be looking carefully at what we can do to uh, to make sure that everyone receives the support they need. And obviously, the first thing is to make sure that they uh, that they have the the support in, in in the very immediate term. People may have lost all their belongings, as we've heard, their identity documents, uh, and and I know our local councils will be stepping up uh, to to look after people who've been affected across uh, the country by fires. But clearly, central government stands ready, as always, to. Uh, uh, to step in as, as needed. Yeah, so people don't have insurance, you'll help them? Uh, well, I, I'm absolutely certain the government will look at whatever is needed to do to make sure that people are, are, are looked after at a time like yeah. this. Clearly, uh, it's yeah. not for me to comment on specific cases. I'm not asking you to comment on specific cases, but you are giving me a massive generalisation. I'm saying if these people wake up this morning in this Premier Inn behind me and they find out they've literally only got the clothes they're standing up in and they don't have any insurance, will you help them? The, the government will stand by people who, who need assistance after an emergency event, as we always do. OK, talk to me about um, Liz Truss. Um, accusations of uh, dirty deals, vote lending going on, um, yesterday, it seemed strange that um, Rishi Sunak only put on three votes to 118 um, to get down to the finals three. Has there been some vote lending going on? The most important thing is that uh, Liz is within touching distance now of those, those final two spots, at which point, obviously, this reverts to the, the membership of the Conservative Party, the 200,000 party members, to choose our next Prime Minister. I've, I've absolutely... Uh, no insight into a any of this. As far as I can see, my my only goal, uh, as colleagues is, is to make sure that the best candidate goes forward to the members. And in my clear view, that is that is Liz. And uh, our campaign has been focused purely and simply on making that case to our colleagues. And, and, and crucially, that's that's succeeding. And we, we want, obviously, to continue that that hard work into today to make sure Liz gets into those final two uh, to final two slots and gets to make her case to the membership. Yeah, uh, nothing illegal about vote lending, though, is there? We certainly saw that it uh, helped Boris Johnson during the last leadership campaign. Do you think it's happened? I, do, I, do, I, I, have, I have no uh, insight into, into anything of that kind. Colleagues ultimately vote for the person they think is best placed to be uh, the next party leader. That's the only possible right thing to do and the only logical thing to do. And uh, I, all I'm focused on today is making sure that we make the case to as many colleagues as possible that if they want a robust plan for economic growth, if they want strong defence spending, if they want clear action on the climate, then they should be voting for, uh, for Liz. And you, you don't see it as um, um, surprising at all that uh, Rishi Sunak only put on three votes? Well, look, it's not for me to comment on what any other campaign might be doing. We're focused as a campaign on making sure that uh, we make the positive case for Liz. And uh, she's got a fantastic story to tell. And we've got just a few hours left now to make sure that we 
uh, get Liz into those final two slots and, as I say, make sure that she gets her chance to make her pitch to the Conservative Party membership. Uh, we'll, uh, we're being told that you all want a clean uh, campaign. Um, I know that Lord Frost um, tweeted about Penny Mordaunt warning um, that uh, she basically wasn't up to the job. Um, and you retweeted that and said that it was a serious warning. Do you think that's fair play? I think it's very important that people get to hear about the assessment of the uh, qualities of, of, of people who are standing not just to be the next leader of the Conservative Party, but our next Prime Minister. And, and, and Lord Frost's warning is not in isolation. It's been echoed by a number of people. I think it's perfectly important that people who have, as I say, worked closely with candidates get to, uh, get to make clear their views. This is, this is a robust contest. You would expect it to be, frankly, because this is an incredibly important job. And uh, people's readiness for that job on day one is critical. That, that is, of course, one of the reasons why I'm supporting the Foreign Secretary, someone who's tested in the highest okay. office and has held a series of uh, Secretary of Stateships. OK. What happened with Tobias Elwood? Why has he had the whip removed when 12 other MPs weren't there either? Well, there are... There are, there, there are uh, look, I, I'm, I'm not a, a member of the Whip's office, but what I would say is that there are clear arrangements in place which all MPs understand, which govern the conditions uh, for absence from votes. And, of course, most especially from critical votes, like a motion of, of confidence in the government, which uh, has the potential to trigger uh, a general election. Uh, you, can, uh, you can either get permission for extenuating circumstances. People may be ill or have loved ones who are ill. Uh, or they may have very, very important life events. As I understand it, Mr Elwood was warned about uh, the, the, the seriousness of his absence. He was on a, a, a foreign visit. Uh, it was within his power to, to return to the United Kingdom to vote. Uh, he, he was in Ukraine, and we believe Ukraine is uh, number one on the Prime Minister's list. He's trying to sort out getting this grain out of Odessa, so doing government work. He was in the middle of uh, a bomb threat, and the airport that he would have gone back into, the tarmac had melted, so it was shot. He was in Moldova, as I understand, rather than Ukraine. He wasn't on government work. Okay. He's not a government minister. He is a backbench MP, and he was asked to return to the United Kingdom for a confidence He's vote, chairman which of was the well... Defence Committee. He's chairman of the Defence Committee. Kay, this vote Are you was well... cross about it? Kay, I'm not getting cross. I'm, I'm simply correcting a record on this. He's not, he's not a government minister. He's a backbench MP. The, this vote was known about well into last Who's week. Who's chairman of the Defence Committee? It, Kay, that doesn't matter for these purposes. This is a vote in confidence in Her Majesty's government, and that trumps all other business. Uh, what, about the other uh, what about the other 12 MPs, then, who weren't well, there either? Okay, I'm not privy to the personal circumstances of all of those MPs, but there are very pressing reasons often why colleagues cannot be there. People may be ill, as I say, they may have loved ones who are ill. Crucially, that's for the Whip's office to determine. They will determine who okay. has legitimate reasons for absence and who doesn't. This was a vote which was known about days in advance, and Mr Elwood chose to go to Moldova. That was his decision, but ultimately it is also, I'm afraid to say, a very, a, a very serious mistake.